Hello, everybody. I'm Arthur Lowry, and I'm an electrical engineer from Monash University. I'd like to show you the relationship between communications technologies and music, and how my love of music turned into a worldwide business. This intro slide has a, a picture of me that I found in my dad's attic uh, last year, and you can see it's rather dated. Um, I'm rather dated also. What I'd like to do is show you that creativity in engineering can be inspired by many things. If you learn physics, then it becomes a common language for practical things like telecommunication systems, but also fun things like musical instruments. Let's look at guitars and lasers and how they share common physics and how the modeling of a laser can be inspired by the playing of a guitar. This picture has a, a picture of a guitar, rather like this one, from the side, and at the bottom is a laser. I'll first describe the guitar. The guitar has strings, obviously, and it has a nut at this end and a bridge at this end, which hold the strings in a stationary position. Between those, the string is able to vibrate in a variety of ways. The lowest vibration is the fundamental, shown as the red curve on the picture. I can sort of illustrate this with this guitar by just plucking one of the strings like so. That mainly contains the fundamental note. However, I can produce other harmonics which are double the frequency and treble the frequency by doing that. I'm plucking it while stopping it here. You get a whole series of higher harmonics, which is better. Now, those harmonics make a guitar sound interesting and warm. In a laser, they're not really wanted. A laser has two mirrors, and between those, the light travels back and forth. The light has to have an integer number of wavelengths between those two mirrors in order to sustain. This can actually happen at a series of harmonics, just as the guitar. But in a laser, each wave between the two mirrors has a different frequency or a different color in light terms. The issue with this is that the colors travel at different speeds along the optical fiber. For example, if I had two colors, a red and a blue, which initially were on top of one another, as they travel along, they separate out. And this can muddle a message. If the message is dots and dashes or ones and zeros, they will all merge into one another and be difficult to sort out at the other end. So many people over the last 40 years or so have wanted to make lasers that only produce a single note. And you can do this in a number of ways. But first, how do we make a laser continue once it's turned on? How can we get it to produce a pure note that lasts forever? Well, one of the inspirations is from a guitar. Um, in rock guitar, you can hold your guitar very close to the amplifier and be very loud, and you might get some feedback. I've made this a little easier on the ears for this demonstration by taking the output of the amplifier and putting it through a coil of wire here, like an electric motor. And I can actually hold that near the string and make the string sustain forever. If I move it away, the note goes away. If I put it closer, it stays stronger. And I can move the position of the amplification to pick out different notes of the same string. Like so. Similar tricks can be played with lasers by placing the amplification along the laser at certain points. Generally, though, a laser is like a diode. You pass current through it from a battery, and this current gives 
the laser high energy electrons which lose their energy to become uh, new photons within the cavity. And that keeps the light going, even though quite a lot of it is escaping out of the end. When I started the PhD, I chose to do laser modeling. This used a lot of inspiration from the guitar. A laser model is a piece of computer code, that's part of my PhD code there, um, which simulates how a laser works and what sort of notes it produces. You can break the computer code down into blocks, and in my case, there was a bunch of blocks, the green ones, called delays, which represented the string. They represent the energy going backwards and forwards. And then every so often, there were some amplifiers, the red triangles, which keep the note strong as it's going along and compensate for the losses out of the end. There's also accounting involved in here because you need to make sure that the amount of energy that you get out of the end is equal to the amount of energy or less than the amount of energy that you're putting in from the electric current. And they are represented by leaky buckets of water. The current fills the bucket, the light when it takes photons empties the bucket. So you can see that by treating um, a laser as a string with energy going backwards and forwards, uh, you can create some computer code which is highly efficient. Another thing I was interested in um, as a child and a teenager was guitar stomp boxes or effects boxes. These are interesting to make, uh, but they're also interesting to rearrange because changing the order of the boxes can change what the sound is coming out of them. So it's completely different putting a fuzz box, which creates a lot of distortion, before or after a phaser, which filters out some of that distortion. Now this was the inspiration to how I got my job at Melbourne University, which was I went to Bell Laboratories in New Jersey and I showed them a prototype of a computer modeling system for lasers. The prototype was little more than pieces of plastic on an overhead projector, and I could lay these in different orders uh, to illustrate that you could swap around the models, which are the square blocks, uh, in order to model different types of laser. For example, the green bits are the laser itself, but at the far end, I have um, a mirror, and that mirror acts like feedback to make the notes more pure. I moved to Melbourne University and we developed uh, a computer software package called Opals for simulating lasers. This had a graphical user interface where you could move around icons on the computer screen and connect them in different orders. This is a, a model of a laser again, um, a tunable laser, and we're going to tune it through a series of notes when I press this button. And you can hear that that is tuning up through a series of cavity resonances, just like I can tune up the harmonics on a string on a guitar. We got lots and lots of customers for this. Um, a lot of the telecommunications boom was powered by our software so that people could design links that uh, circumnavigated the world and really supported globalization. More recently at Monash University, um, I've been looking at different types of communication system that can send more data through an optical fiber. And again, uh, this is a 2015 idea. Um, quite a few people had this around the world simultaneously. Um, but my take on it was it was a musical problem. This is a recent example um, which uses a musical analogy of chords um, to send three data streams along an optical fiber. The trick is that the receiver has to separate out the information at the end. Rather like when you're listening to music, you can uh, pick out the bass guitar, the rhythm guitar, and uh, the lead guitar. Um, and the reason you can do this is that each instrument has its set of harmonics. Now, if you're a 
a, a young guitar band and you only have one amplifier and everyone else comes to your garage and brings their instruments, often everyone plugs into the same amplifier and it sounds terrible. And that's part of the inspiration for this technology here. Um, I'll first show you the good example. This is where you're a rich band and you can afford your own amplifiers for the bass guitarist, rhythm guitarist and lead guitarist. The thing about an amplifier is it distorts the sound. So does the speaker. Now that can be pleasant as long as there's one amplifier per instrument because the distortion is all harmonics just like you normally get on a string. We can see that or hear it actually if I press the button here. It's quite a nice mellow sound. That's three instruments all through a lot of distortion, but then added together. However, if you put all three instruments through one amplifier and distort them all together, you get a far more complex and perhaps annoying sound. It's got a lot of higher frequencies and a lot of those higher frequencies aren't very musical. So, in conclusion, I'd like to say that the physics behind many things is very similar. In fact, a lot of modern physics is based on vibrations and waves. Um, the vibrations in a laser, which is only, say, a millimeter long, are the same sort of vibrations and equations that are in this guitar. The feedback in a laser to make it more pure and keep it going is rather similar to in this guitar. The signal processing that we use to make our guitar more interesting or tune our pitch correctly or perhaps produce this video is very similar to the models within that computer program. So you can draw inspiration by making analogies between interesting things in the world like music and art, and you can use physics to bridge through into something that's useful, like designing new telecommunication systems that allow us to communicate more easily and effectively throughout the world. There's been a few examples where I press the button here to, to hear different sounds. If you look at my web page down at the bottom, there are some more that you can listen to. Thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed my presentation.